Welcome to the 624 Pod, your home for all things independent films. We're going to discuss all the positives and negatives when it comes to independent filmmaking. We're going to have incredible guests from the film industry talk about the behind the scenes experience, the good, the bad, the ugly, and how the industry has changed in the past 10, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, minutes, hours, years. years. That's the point. It's always changing. And of course, we will always focus on independent filmmaking right here in our state of New Jersey. I'm Tom Baldinger. And I'm Mark Rigadana. All right, let's do this. All right, Tom. Who do we have today? Mr. Riccadonna, we have a very, very special guest. Yes. Her name is Jackie Burns. She is a Broadway actress, actor, yeah. Broadway actor, actress. Uh, also, Jackie has done multiple TV shows, movies, uh, but she is the longest running Elphaba on Wicked on Broadway. Uh, she was also in If Then, and she is now starring in the off-Broadway show Titanic. Mm-hmm. So welcome, Jackie Burns, to the uh, to the 624 podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. And also, Jackie is co-star of our TV series, Unsuited. Yes. Pop that's off. Where, that's where I got to meet you. I didn't. I see. Here's what's so wild. When we walked on set, I didn't know anybody who was going to be on it. I didn't look yeah. at, like, the call sheet. And we walk in, and I see you, and I go, oh, she's probably, like, a... a a model turned actress and she's funny <laughs> and she's, and then I find out your resume, right? I'm like, Oh my God, I should have been nervous on set. I, <laughs> been- oh, I was the nervous one. <laughs> Not with the cooler. <laughs> I was too dumb to be nervous. That's why I never look anyone up. Uh, oh, I'm the same way. I don't want, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't know, you're like ignorance is bliss. You're like, yeah. oh, I just auditioned for Steven Spielberg. Cool. <laughs> I thought that was my uncle Lou. Yeah, that <laughs> was Marty Scorsese. <laughs> exactly. So Jackie, uh, so when you when you joined the cast of Unsuited, we're going to get into your career. We're going to get into a lot of stuff here on this cast. But I just want to m- mention. I'm not sure if you remember this, but when you were on set with us, my daughter is a big fan. And my daughter at the time was 10 years old. And we were, before you came to set, it was like a couple of days before we were walking our dog and she, she came and we we're walking our dog. She came off the bus and she, you know, she's helped me walk the dog. And she's like, dad, she goes, dad, I looked, I looked up Jackie. I found her. I found her on, on YouTube. And then she started playing wicked and she's like, can I meet her? Can I meet her? I was like, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So then it was like a couple of days later we're on set and my, my daughter's like, like this, she's like in the corner watching Jackie work. And she's just kind of like her hands are going. And then finally you went up and talked to her. And then afterwards she was like, dad, she talked to me. <laughs> so you made a little girl's dream come true, which was awesome. Hey, I, I mean, she was the sweetest. God, how many years? Was that two, three two years? years uh, it's, it's almost, so we, we shot that during COVID. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's almost three years now, but uh, you know, lots of good stuff that's coming up for Unsuited. And uh, you've seen my emails. We we yeah. did a, we did a screening out in Vegas, yeah. the World I know, Series I was Poker. To miss it. What's that? I was bummed to miss that. Well, we've got another one potentially coming up in Florida, but uh, Florida. So he, yes, yeah. Please. Yeah, so uh, the World Poker Tour. But enough about that. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about what's going on with... Uh, let's talk about Titanic. Tell oh, me, okay. what's, what's happening? Uh, Titanic is um, a musical parody about, <laughs> about the movie Titanic and if Celine oh, Dion was on the Titanic. And so it's all Celine <laughs> Dion music. And she like yeah. comes in and was I like... Love it. You know, I was on the Titanic and this is actually what happened. And it's just ridiculous. And I get to play Celine Dion and sing a bunch of Celine Dion songs and, you know, get to be blonde, which is (laughs) spooky crazy. And um, you get to improv every night. And it's just like, there's a little improv section where, you know, I just get to make actors do uh, the other actors, Rose and Jack do stupid things. And (laughs) it's really funny and it's 90 minutes straight through. And, um, People love it. You know, it's, uh, people like they're just like a year later are still obsessed. Like Friday night, Maya, uh, Maya Rudolph was there, which I was like, oh, oh wow. my God, because I love her. And uh, and she was like, you're hilarious. And I was like, me? Oh, my God. They got to go in your press kit. Yeah. I'm so, yeah. Maya Rudolph said I was funny. So. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, the show is like, it's, it's really, really funny. It's probably one of the funniest shows I think I've ever seen. And it's been running now for a, a, a year, a little over a year now. A little, yeah, I think it's, I think it's been a year. Yeah. Wow. And and where is it? Uh, where can people go see this in the city? What uh, what theater is it? It's at the Daryl Roth Theater in Union Square. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. So. That's a very cool, very cool theater. And you guys. Yeah. Get, and uh, so when you when you got the contract to do it, how long did you think you were doing it, and how long have you been doing it? Because I know, like, the theater especially, it's like who knows. Very true. Um, well. It was the show was supposed to actually close gin in January, so wow. I was contracted to January. Um, so that would have been six months, and they just extended to June, so another six months. Uh, and they asked me to stay. So if I were to stay, that would be a year. That's nice, amazing. congratulations! Oh. But yes. we'll see. We'll see. You know, <laughs> we'll that's <see>. awesome. <laughs> So how many how many uh, how many shows is it running throughout the week? Uh, is it how many how many performances and how many eight. performances are you doing versus your understudy? I do all the performances eight shows a week unless I have amazing uh, unless I have personal days like this week I'm actually going to be gone because I had con I have like sometimes I have symphony concerts that I've already booked out and they book out like years in advance so um, I'm going to I'm going to Napa Valley I leave Thursday morning Ooh. six a.m. And I am there until Sunday. I fly back Sunday. So I'm out of the show because I'm doing concerts Friday and Saturday. Um, but if I'm, that's the only time I'm out. And the only time I'm out is if I'm doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cancel work for work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's never like going so to the Bahamas. For... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, now, you, when, you know, off-Broadway doesn't pay so great. So you kind of have to hustle. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. I had a friend who was in... Um, was in Jekyll and Hyde and she oh. still taught singing lessons. Oh yeah. It's like, you're a Broadway star. You're not just doing Broadway. Like, no, yeah, you're like, no. Yeah. I, <laughs> I teach, I still teach same. I taught today. Um, what do you, yeah. what do you teach exact singing obviously, or am I, I don't am I teach stupid? singing. I teach, um, uh, uh, interpret like song interpretation. Um, Oh, cool. I don't, I don't have a, uh, a degree in voice. So I, I have no, place in telling people how to i have no vocal pedagogy degree so i leave that to the real um voice teachers i just i'm like what is this song about and you know like maybe we could place this more in a head voice rather than a full chest you know what i mean like just like kind of judge yeah. uh your performance so hopefully that, well more out. people need that th yeah. than uh, i think the average person understands because uh you can be a great singer, but that doesn't necessarily mean people want to listen. It's very true. You know, and it's, uh, so we need more of that because I feel like, uh, a lot of the people who are, they hit the notes, but they don't make you think Feeling. about the song. Yeah. yeah. I say that. That's what I always say to all my students. I'm like, listen, you come to a certain point in this industry. Everybody has a good voice. Like literally mm. everyone. It's like, when you audition, it's like girl after girl after girl after girl, guy after guy after guy after guy. It's like great voice, great voice, singing high, singing high, singing high. What's going to make you them remember you? You know what I mean? Like, is, yeah. is if you make them feel something, you know what I mean? If you tell a story and make me remember you, you know what I mean? Rather than like, oh, she hit a high note. It's like every at a certain point, everybody does that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're playing with the pros. It's, yeah. Everybody's good. It's true. It's like <laughs> I, I've, sometimes I've sat in on auditions because a friend of mine is a, a artistic producer for a theater and I, I'm always like a gagged by how good everyone is. I always leave and go, I don't know how I've ever worked. Like there's just uh, so much talent. You're like, holy crap. You can curse. Go ahead. You can curse. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jackie, talk to us about the process uh, uh, as of an actor on stage versus film and TV because and as a musical versus exactly regular so, stage like doing right. just the straight play and then TV and film yeah it's like talk so talk different. to our talk to our audience about that because I mean this podcast is about independent filmmaking it's about independent theater it's about you know building and and we want a lot of people listening in to to understand what professionals like you go through and what the process is like so that they know what to do so talk a little bit about that if you don't mind yeah. Well, you know, there is a stigma that drives me a little cuckoo crazy, which is if you do musicals, you're not a real actor. I don't know why 
that is. I, that's that's not true. I was I went to Wagner College for musical theater, so no, I I'm with you on that. That's yeah. totally that's not true. It's not true. I went to school for just acting. I didn't go to school for musical theater. I just I got a degree in just acting. But because I can sing, that means I can't act. And it was a stigma that happened while I was in college. Like a lot of the people that I went to school with kind of made fun of me for like being like, oh, you you want to do musicals? And I was like, I want to do everything. You know what mm. I mean? And I was like, I'm going to get the last laugh because I'm going to work. Because the more you can do, mm -hmm. the more diverse you are, the more opportunities you have, right? But yeah. it does drive me a little crazy that this industry, it's like the second they see a musical on your resume, it's like, oh, you're a musical theater actor. And it's you're like, one of those. Yeah. And I just think it's, I mean, like, and listen, to that, you know, to their credit, there are some musical theater actors that are a little generic and vague and indicate you know what i mean but then there are just there are just as many straight actors who can be generic and non-specific and yeah. indicate you know what i mean as well for, so for speaking of of one of the people who just do straight theater and straight acting and not musical yeah it's more of a jealousy i can't <laughs> sing <laughs> That's it. So it makes me feel better about me by saying that about you. <laughs> okay, that makes me feel better. But the casting directors, those are, I'm like, can you, come on. Like, I sometimes my agents have to fight to get me seen for a straight play. And I'm like, mm. in In on. the stand-up world, um, bookers look down on acts who do impressions and, and the, like, uh, sure. prop acts or, uh, you know, oh, Oh, you do, you play guitar in your act. And it's like, there's still comics. The audience is still laughing. Why do you look down on that? Wow. Now, again, another thing, I, I can't do impressions. I can't sing. I can't do anything with props. So it's, to me, it's out of jealousy. But <laughs> <laughs> but no, some bookers will be like, oh, guitar act. I don't even need to watch his video. It's like, really? he might be That's really good. Crazy. It's crazy. It's people, people like to be in their pocket and they're afraid of what they don't know i think yes i 100 percent agree it's i very... enjoy everything i just wish i was good at it <laughs> Me too. do you see I... why i have him as a co-host this guy's this guy just he's, he's always coming yes. out with stuff just coming yeah so uh, jackie talk about the preparation as a for musical theater to straight plays to is obviously the preparation is different or is it the same for you oh well it's definitely different i mean like ugh. TV and film acting is very different than, you know, the theater, theater. because, you know, in theater, you are having to, you know, get your emotions crossed to, you know, the back of the house, 3000 people where, you know, mm. TV and film, it's literally right here, you know? So like, you know, a, from a, this a, to this, to this. Yeah. It's like <laughs> TV and film. It's like just moving your eye, just like, you know, a quarter of an inch. is like massive on a screen where, you know, that would get lost on stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. It's like, you know, sometimes in the theater, if I've been like auditioning a lot for TV and film, I'll get a note being like, it's getting a little too small. It's getting a little too nuanced. It's getting a little too like TV and film, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you're like, did you look at my resume? I, I do TV and film. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. And then sometimes, you know, when I've just, just been doing theater, when I start doing auditioning for TV and film again, it's like the same thing. My agents will be like, it's getting a little big. You know what I mean? And you're like, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a totally different. On set, the sound um, guy's like, ah. Totally. They're like, why are you screaming at me? <laughs> I got to make sure he hears it. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, stop. You know? Um, and especially like also like features wise, like, you know, I have big features, which on stage, you know, like don't look too big, but like on camera, you know, if I were to like really open my eyes, like it's like, whoa, that's too much, right? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So it is interesting <laughs> to have to be cognizant of like those those things, you know, like nothing makes you more self conscious than when a camera's right in your face because you know every time you do anything, it's so, gonna be on a twenty foot screen yes. at some point, and you're like, uh, I, yeah. I hope I wipe my eyes clean of eye boogers. <laughs> totally. That's yeah. You're like opening everything in my teeth. It's so interesting, like how like 
natural you can be when you're just talking to somebody. And then the second somebody turns on a camera, you just become so overly aware of everything you're doing. It's like, oh God, I'm using my hands too much. Um, okay. Um, you know, even rather than just being yourself. <laughs> and then in acting class, they're always get out of your head, get out of your head. <laughs> it's like, ah. yeah. Being an actor. Why did we choose this? I don't know. I, well, I don't have any other skills. Again, That's why it's I was the, <laughs> Yeah. There's no plan B. Yeah. You know, it's stand up comedy and acting. Uh, if I don't do that, I can go back to my last job, and that was lemonade stand. So <laughs> that's it. Friendship bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> you wear this one, I wear this one. Everyone will know we're besties. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, talk to us a little bit about um, <clears throat> you know you we you saw what was going on in the industry with with the WGA, um, you know they've got a settlement or you know uh, it's it's coming up. Uh, SAG is still striking, um, but Actors Equity everything is is copacetic there, right? In the theater, no no issues, no issues well, there. I mean, correct? there's always issues in our theater, but there's no strike. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. Yeah. Uh, Perfect answer. I mean, so what's? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, no. So yeah. So so, what are your thoughts on on what's what's been happening and 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 in, in the industry today? And have has that affected you? For I mean, obviously you're doing you're doing Titanic, so you're you're busy with that. But as far as other roles and and for TV, film, are you are you? What 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 are your thoughts on that? And and how's that? How how are you doing with that? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I think it was necessary, very necessary and needed to happen. Um, uh, it's, and the actors are still on strike, you know what I mean? And yep. um, uh, as for, the, I haven't had any TV or film auditions at all because there <laughs> hasn't been any. Um, right. uh, so that's been interesting. And then the other interesting thing is like, you know, every TV and film actor is out of work. So like, then they're headed to theater. So there's like, you know, more actors available and less jobs. <laughs> I was going to say, does that does that does that narrow the 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 scope of opportunities because you have more of now the you know film and TV actors coming into theater and going well, well I've got to work. Y yes, I, I was all too happy to have booked Titanic before the strike. I think I booked mm. it like not even a month before the stri strike happened. Wow. So it was like very fortuitous. <laughs> to be working because most of my friends are not working and most of my friends i mean are ridiculously talented and it's just there's there's just no opportunity yeah. um and it's still the thing is what's hard is that in theater theater um, broadway is still not back even even though people are like oh broadway's back it's not like the tourism mm. actually everybody went to it was crazy there was like hardly any tourism this summer in new york it was everybody went to um europe because I think because Europe was like on such a harsh lockdown over the pandemic the last few years that everyone just seemed to go there rather than New York. So like, you know, there's only so many New Yorkers and people from New Jersey and Pennsylvania yeah. that come in and see Wicked and Hamilton and you know what I mean? For the 80 hundredth time, like we need <laughs> tourism. And if there isn't as much tourism as it used to be. So Broadway is still limping along hardcore. Then the other thing is, is that everything that was slated to go to Broadway before the pandemic has been on hold. So you have this backlog of shows no, that have been just... waiting to get a theater, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like then, and those actors are already attached to it because you know what I mean? Usually shows take a while to get to Broadway and the, 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 uh, the cast have been attached to it for a while. So there really isn't a lot of new work opportunity because you have all the backlog of all the other shows that are coming that already have the cast. Yeah, yeah. So it's still like, it's still very, and it doesn't help. The news keeps saying how dangerous New York's so dangerous. I know. It's like, no, it's not. Right. And I also find it funny because when I first moved to New York in the nineties, all the, all the old guys would all tell me when I'd be like hanging out or whatever. They'd be like, Oh, it used to mean something to be here. It's a tough town. <laughs> then it was cleaned up and they're like, yeah, these wimps uh, used to mean yeah. something to be in New York. And now that the crime went back up, they're like, I would never go to New York. It's a dump. And it's like, which do you want? Well, that's, that's human nature though. Isn't it? Like we want to, we, we never want to be happy. It's no. like, we want to complain 24 <laughs> seven. Like it's, it's never, never is there going to be a day where somebody's like, yeah, 
great. You know, it's everything's like, oh. good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, but New York isn't dangerous. You can go to the theater. Like people are oh crazy. God, yes. No, that whole it just smells like weed more now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That truly is what it is. It just smells yeah. like weed a little bit more than it used to. <laughs> that's the only difference I find when I come back up. Totally it's like, true. <laughs> and it's legal, so it's not even bad. It used to be cigarette smoke. Now it's weed smoke. Yeah, I'd rather weed than cigarette smoke. Me too. Oh, now, I now prefer for weed smoke over I, a lot of things. Mark, you and I talked about this on the ride up here. Apparently, you and Jackie are related. Well, that's uh, when we were on set. We got to still figure out if we're related. Wait, I don't remember this. You don't remember talking about this? No, I'm because a I'm on my I'm, mom's side. I'm a goldfish. Everybody makes fun of me because I literally will forget something. If I, <laughs> so, I don't know how I remember lines because, quite frankly, like tell, I'm the best person to tell some a secret to because I will just forget. Yeah, you'll forget it. <laughs> yeah. So like, remember, I told you, I'm like, nope, I don't. Mm -mm. That was like. The whole bar scene in between takes you and I were trying to figure out our relatives if we're related on the you burn side. You mean we weren't like staying in character and being like the Daniel Day Lewis? So. No, yeah, we were uh, doing that. Uh, yeah. Well, we were we were doing the Daniel Day Lewis because I made everybody call me Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> That's right, you did. That's right, Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> Excuse me, you mean Mr. Lincoln? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying oh, yeah. to figure out if we're related, and I, I still can't figure it out. Yeah, I, I <laughs> nothing. We won't do the family tree here. I don't even know my family tree. I'm the worst. I never did that ancestry. dot com. Did you ever do that? I don't. Yeah, I no. did it. It was a really messed up tree. Really? Yeah, it's, it's all over the place. You're like, you don't want to know. On the one side, it seemed to just go straight up. <laughs> Oh, a lot of incest, huh? <laughs> eh, this Italian side of my family haven't left their towns in a long time. That's exciting. So, yeah. yeah. Surprised I don't have three eyes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't <laughs> want to know those things. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. So, yeah. Jack, you have a show tonight. You're going. So, from here, you're you're jumping, jumping, jumping on us for, for a show, right? Yes. Yes. Indeed. So, that's why I was like, I felt bad you're like, Five to what was your? I think your schedule. What is it? Five to nine or five to ten? Yeah, we usually so we we record about three or four, maybe five episodes, and we do it between like five and ten p.m. Yeah. But no, this this worked out perfectly for yeah. us. No, okay. so this was literally when I go to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. I leave for work around like I'm gonna today. I'm gonna leave at four forty-five because I'm doing this. But normally I'll leave like around four thirty because I go do a voice lesson at five, and then okay. I go to the theater at six and then have the show at seven um so yeah and then i get home around like 9 30 so i was like i'm i'm pretty much the worst time for me no that's no i didn't i you know i don't think i i don't know if i if we answer this but so how many performances uh a week eight eight performances so eight performances a week um seven o'clock every night except for on saturday and sunday saturday we have a five and a nine brutal okay. and then uh, uh Saturday we have, I mean, Sunday we have a three and a seven. So that's, I'm not a big fan of the five double show. Headers. Yeah. Two double headers together. I'm always like, cause then Monday is your only day off and you're like so tired from the weekend that you're kind of like exhausted. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do, are you a firm believer that as a, as an actress, you leave it all on the stage so that when you come off your, are you exhausted every night after a performance or, or are you like, I remember, I mean, again, not at the same level, but when I used to do musical theater at Wagner, there were nights where like, I was like, oh my God, the show is over and I was still pumped. And then there were other nights you kind of come off and you're exhausted. And one of our guests that coming on uh, in our next episode, uh, Ronnie Marmo, he does, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a comedian, I'm Lenny Bruce. And he talks about how he just leaves it on the stage and he's exhausted after every performance. Would you say the same for yourself? Yeah, I don't know how to give anything other than 110%. So yeah. There's no like autopilot. There's no like, well, I'll just kind of like do play. I'll just do like a B show. Like it's like <laughs> I need to do everything I have every single night because it's like. So you where know. do you get the where do you get the energy? I mean, you're you're telling me you're you're doing Broadway or you're doing off Broadway, mm -hmm. right? With Titanic, you're the days off that you're not working on the on the stage in New York City. You're doing you're doing other events and you're singing. So where do you you know where does all this energy come from? Uh, I'm tired a lot. 
<laughs> <laughs> I was going to say love of game and love of bed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, um, you know, it's funny. So last week was my birthday. And so I didn't get oh, to happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. I didn't get to go out because I had a show. Um, and so last oh, that night, that sucks. I know it's fine, whatever. Um, but so last night, um, I had to do yesterday during the day, I had to do an audition and then a film an audition. And then my boyfriend and I went out for, you know, happy hour and dinner and, you know, had a, like my birthday then, but I hadn't had a, drink in so long because i just like never have time um mm. and it was also my first monday true monday off i've had concerts every monday um and it was hilarious i'm so tired today and hung over from one beer and one glass of wine because ah. i don't ever do that <laughs> anymore and i know i'm getting old because that one glass of red wine kept me up all night i was like totally awake i was so tired but i was like can't sleep I was like, oh man, getting older sucks. It's like not worth it. I've been so tired and hung over today. And I was like, you would think I like went on a bender. <laughs> You're like, I only had two drinks. I didn't have 22. And like, right? not two drinks, like like two drinks in like a span of like 10 hours. Like, like right. wow. Like we had wow. Dinner, yeah. Then we went home and walked our dog and fed our dog. And then at like 7.30, a glass of wine with dinner and yet still i'm like oh i'm busted like, <laughs> so sad. my oh, old self would have just been like jackie this is, i used to be able to like i used to be able to drink everybody under the, every any guy i could drink a 30 pack and be like the next day be like let's go run a marathon and now i'm like, right <laughs> it does suck getting old it really it does really I, there, there are there are many nights I, i'll sit at home and i'll look at my wife i'm like i'm gonna have a couple of beers i'm gonna have a vodka i do vodka and gatorade because i think i'm like replenishing oh, myself sure. But it, it doesn't work. Oh. Um, it doesn't vodka work. and Pedialyte was my go-to for a while. Oh, did that? Did that? Awesome. Did you? Did that it help has you? all the electrolytes? So when you're drinking, you're also hydrating. I but like that. I always <laughs> felt like now I feel like it's not worth it because I don't like not being able to function the next day. So for like, oh, you know, I'll do a Friday night or whatever, and then that Saturday, I'm like, Wait, oh so god, sorry, sorry. Uh, Alexa, off. I didn't talk to you. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, <She's>... off. <laughs> Tom, stop teasing her, Alexa. <laughs> I don't know what she heard out of your mouth that all of a sudden said wanted her to talk. Sorry. No, she she heard alcohol. She wants to start drinking. <laughs> Hello. Wait, I remember old Jackie. <laughs> I miss her. She was so fun. We were playing music all night. Well, look, you've got to, it is, it's running close to your time. You got to rock and roll. So what we're going to, uh, we want to have you back though, Jackie, because okay. there's right. so much more we want to talk to uh, about theater, about Broadway. I'm sure our audience is going to want to hear more about your process and uh, you as an actress and your career. And we didn't get enough time. So, but real quick, so we're going to, we do this with all of our guests, but we're, we're going to shift it because we're talking theater. Usually yeah. we ask our guests, give us your top three best movies mm. that you love, but we're going to shift it because we want to ask you your top three theatrical yeah. shows. And they could be Broadway, off Broadway, musicals, non musicals. Shows that I've been in or shows that I've seen and love. Shows that you love, that you're like, oh my God, I love that show. Like, you know, some people's like, so Tony Dennison, his first was The Godfather, right? So that was his, oh, yeah. right? So what would be your three either musical or non-musical shows that you absolutely love? Whether you did them or you would love to do them or you saw them and you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Okay. Well, my first like favorite musical that I saw that got me like really gave me the bug was Evita. I loved it so ah, much. So that's one of my excellent. favorite, one of my favorite musicals ever. Um, and then, uh. August Osage County, I that play is so brilliant. I loved it mm -hmm. so much. Um, oh, and then it's like it's a tie. Um, Aida, it's always a tie. There's always a tie. Everybody has a tie. Yeah, Aida and uh, Aida and Wicked. Those ah, two. Um, Aida, Avida. <laughs> yeah, Aida, Wicked and Avida, Wicked, and August Osage County. <laughs> I love it. Those are, those are those are great those are great choices i love them all jackie thank you so much for for coming on uh you know break a leg tonight break a right. leg for the for the next you said six months it's running for another six months yep all right so give us the plug give us uh how can everybody see the show one more time please can we follow you oh yes and we, we are, can people follow you on social media yeah you can follow me on social media jackie burns nyc at instagram 
Um, and you can follow Titanic at Titanic uh, Musical. Um, and uh, we're at the Daryl Roth, and I play Sully Bayon, and you can call me Simi, <laughs> and it will, um, <laughs> you know. Who plays Santa, your husband? There is? Who? Uh, Celine Dion was married to Santa Claus. Who's Santa Claus? Her husband. Are you talking about Renee like... Montalil? Yeah. Well, uh, um, well, you'll just have to come and find out. Ah, I see. Ah, good plug. Hey! Good, plug. good twist. Good twist. <laughs> well, thank you, Jackie, so much. Really appreciate you coming on. Um, so we just uh, great show. Uh, thank you, Jackie. It was it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot. Learned. I feel like I learned even more. Yeah. Um. So just real quick, our sponsors for uh for the six twenty four podcast is the Roost, uh, as well as Cream Ridge Golf Course, uh, out in Cream Ridge, New Jersey. Uh, Cream Ridge Golf Course is actually owns the Roost, a great restaurant. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, they uh, have live entertainment. Maybe we'll try and get Jackie to come out and do. I can do a number. Do a number yes. uh, with with the band. Uh, they have a lot of live bands and live shows going on, and uh, the golf course is uh, fantastic. Cream Ridge, New Jersey. So, Jackie, thank you so much. Congratulations on Titanic. Um, we'll have you back. We're going to be we're at one of these episodes. We're going to be talking specifically about Unsuited. Maybe have some of the cast on. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll talk about what's going on there, but uh, congratulations and, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again. All right. Bye, guys. See you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. <laughs>